Several of us were involved at, in a brainstorming meeting with DFID around working with the private sector, and something rather significant happened in a, in a um, meeting I had at the retreat, which was the people leading it titled it Working with the Private Sector, and actually showed a PowerPoint where they crossed that out and retitled the session Engaging with Health Markets. And I think we may be moving now away from working with the private sector to engaging with health markets. And that's a lot of what I've been hearing is a struggle to go from one way of framing the question to the other. And I just have a couple comments on the second framing. Um, the first is, um, in the session I was at, people, one person particularly discussed about regulation and said we really need to take a longitudinal uh, approach to this. We actually all know that health markets and health systems are path dependent and it takes a long time to build institutions for effective health markets. And I think we need now to start asking questions about what I put here, institution building for health markets. Um, and particularly building institutions in countries with relatively weak governance and well, relatively weak government regulatory structures. We can't wait for that to happen, therefore we are researching in those contexts, not other contexts. And that leads to questions about creating market models for safety, quality and equity in the private sector. How are they solved addressing these questions? What's happening with the new way citizens are organizing around health, around specific diseases, around accountability? How are they playing into this new structure? And what are effective regulatory partnerships? I think we, we know that certainly in the advanced market economies, regulatory structures always involve the <coughs> civil society, the professional associations, and the large pharmaceutical companies. Governments on their own have not tried to do it. And we're talking now about new emerging regulatory partnerships. We know very little about what ones work, how do they deal with the inequalities of interest and power, what kind of regulatory partnerships work in these environments. So I think there's a whole agenda really around institution building and a lot of questions may think about. Then I were asked to look at the future. So I'm going to just put a few future, a couple of future looking questions. One is I put innovation. Now we know that the, the locus of innovation in the global economy is shifting very quickly to rapidly growing countries. We now call them BRICS or BRICS or we have Mexico which is uh, I guess part of the DAC, but I mean, we, we real OECD, we have a shift in innovation from North America and parts of Europe towards other countries. And yet a lot of our innovation discussion is about ourselves going out and doing tests. So I think we need, in the context of rapid economic growth, this paradox that countries with rapid economic growth have bad health systems and don't seem to be responding. Where is the innovation? Are bottom of the pyramid models plausible? Are they emerging? How are they working? What are the regulatory arrangements that are needed to make them work? What, what is happening? And how are the, the solutions to the problems for many, many hundreds of millions of people moving out of poverty, how are they starting to solve their health care problems? So I think we need to ask real questions about where is innovation? Who are the innovators? Are they social entrepreneurs? Are they very small business people? Are they some of the large corporations that are emerging in, certainly in India and China, Brazil, um, Mexico? Or are they smaller firms? What are their relationship and where are the key innovators in this new economy that's emerging? So I think we need to shift our, our gaze away from what used to be a, a particular American agenda. This is now a global economy with a global agenda and global innovators. The second I wanted to say that we've heard nothing of are emergent opportunities and challenges associated with, I put two things, we may think of more. We're getting large companies, pharmaceutical companies, service delivery companies emerging in countries without a strong regulatory structure. I mean, they have developed in, the, in the North America and in Europe with very strong regulations, for example, against vertical integration between pharmaceutical R&D based companies and retail pharmacies and GPs or and doctors. There may not be those rules in other countries. <coughs> what kind of new organizations are emerging? What are the global regulatory challenges that are emerging? And how do we start understanding it? I think we can assume it, it's going to happen. So we need to start researching it. And I didn't mention I put here and with very different policies about regulating research and development. So we may, we're going to get and what, to what degree are companies from, the, from North America investing in companies in India or in China to seek these new structures? And 
Of course, eventually with the WTO, we'll come back here. Secondly, with the spread of ICTs and the spread of new diagnostic technologies, what are the new, what are the new opportunities? And also, of course, what are the big regulatory challenges? And the big question, are these potentially disruptive innovations that will radically change health systems over the next 10 or 20 years? If they may be, there's a very big research agenda to understand that.